Welcome back guys to Next Gen VR. Today we have a lot of news to cover. Just wow, Pimax has announced a VR headset that has so many features jam-packed, it almost sounds too good to be true. So in this video I want to detail all of the features this headset has and my thoughts on whether they can actually deliver such a product and uh, more. So let's jump into the next generation. So this new headset is called the Pimax Reality 12K QLED headset, priced at $2,400 and going to ship in Q4 of 2022. Now before you turn away from this video because of the price, you have to hear all the amazing features you would get for this price. All right, so starting with the lenses, we have a combination of a spheric and Fresnel lenses, Pimax's own custom-made bionic lens technology. And just look at these lenses. This is pretty incredible. We have the center circle with no uh, concentric rings. This is probably the spheric area. And then we have all these rings on the outside, which is probably the Fresnel area. And they say that this helps to achieve 200 degrees horizontal FOV, only 20 degrees shorter than the human vision, and 135 degrees vertical FOV, which is the limit of human vision. And for binocular overlap, we have 118 degrees, only 2 degrees short of human uh, overlap vision, stereo vision. So, so here in this chart, we can see the difference between Fresnel and aspheric lenses. There's some advantages in weight and sweet spot is supposedly bigger. So it'll be interesting to see how this actually looks when somebody tries this headset out. And now onto the display. We have a second generation CLPL display with um, 2.4 times more pixels than the 8KX, which is pretty incredible. And we have a QLED and mini LED technology. Mini LED being the first time this has been introduced in a VR headset. They have several tiny displays all bunched together in, in the center of the vision. So this is pretty cool. This allows them to achieve better contrast, better colors, 1200 ppi or 35 ppd, which to put into perspective, the Vario Aro is currently supports 35 ppd. Now one major complaint people have with the 8KX is the distortion can be distracting for them. So they claim that this time they have an anti-distortion technology, which would have zero distortion, which is a pretty big claim to make. I will be very surprised if they actually have something like that that works 100% with no distortion. Now near the end of the video, they mentioned that they're working on a fixed retina display where there will be 70 PPD in the center and 35 PPD in the periphery and uses micro LED displays. Now I'm not sure if they meant this as being directly related to the Reality 12K headset or if they're also working on this separately. That wasn't made clear in the live stream. Next, let's talk about the tracking. So apparently they have partnered with Toby to create built-in eye tracking system. Now for those who have used Pimax's previous eye tracking module with 7 and Venson, that eye tracking was really bad. And Toby is a much better company for eye tracking, so that sounds pretty promising. And they claim that the headset can reach up to 200 hertz in native PCVR mode. And then we also have multiple cameras for face tracking, lip tracking, and even full body tracking, which is a first for any VR headset. So with 11 cameras, we will see how well that would actually work. And now onto audio. They claim that they have three noise canceling microphones that allow for better uh, sound quality and that they have partnered with Tectonic to create their audio uh, solution. And we all know Tectonic is a really great company for audio quality. So they claim that this headset is an omni all-in-one solution, meaning that it can be both standalone and wired with PC VR. Obviously wired would give you more features over standalone. So what they do is they use a Qualcomm XR2 Snapdragon chip, as well as their own uh, custom engine for the PCVR side. They use Wi-Fi 6E 
technology with an optional WeGig module that does 60 gigahertz. So this is pretty awesome. The headset also features automatic IPD adjustment between 57 to 72 millimeters, which is uh, pretty cool and what Vario currently offers, but no other manufacturer has such a solution. Now the headset was designed to be modular, which means that the WeGig and the um, body tracking, face tracking, hand tracking are all separate modules. So that $2,400 price you hear, I suspect that might just be for the base model. And then the, all the other modules are extras that you can pay more for. And the reason I say that is because we've seen that with the Vario VR3, they were able to bring the price down to $2,000 for the Aro by eliminating a lot of the components. So if there's a headset like this with so many of these components, I can't imagine it costing um, $2,400 for all of these modules combined. I think $2,400 is going to be the base starting price for this headset. Another thing that they announced is a console-like solution called the Pimax VR Station, which is jam-packed with hardware specifically made for Pimax headsets in order to run the VR headset with its own VR titles and uh, supposedly we don't know the price of this thing or how it compares to a PC with a 3080 or 3090, but it is a pretty interesting offering. All right, and now let's look at some specs that they released in this spec sheet. So in native PC VR mode, we have up to 12K resolution or 6K per eye. And I'm very curious how this would run on a 3090 or 3080 or if you would need a much better graphics card to be able to run this resolution. Can the eye tracking actually take a lot enough load off of the demand for 12K? So we have up to 200 Hertz refresh rate. And if you're running at 12K, I imagine you're not gonna be able to push that much high refresh rate anyway. And we have 200 degrees horizontal FOV. That is 40 degrees higher than the Pimax 8KX, which is 160 but we don't know whether they're exaggerating the claim or not, so it'll be interesting to see. Then we have the standalone VR, which runs at 8K or 5K. So that is more closer to current generation headsets, 120 Hertz, 90 Hertz, something that the Quest uh, 2 already offers, but we have 150 degrees horizontal, which is only 10 degrees shorter than the 8KX. So that is a pretty compelling offering to have a standalone VR mode that you can just use without uh without having any compromises on field of view now obviously you can get the we gig module which i assume would let you have that wider fov and that pc vr experience so it'll be interesting to see what they come up with so now here are my thoughts on this headset so based on all of these specs it is sounds like the most incredible headset you could ever ask for it's like a wish list of everything that vr users want but that may also be the problem because we know that pimax as a company has a history of promising a lot of ambitious things and then taking a long time to make them so that estimate of q4 2022 i would not be surprised if it takes six months to a year longer to actually deliver we have the sword controllers and the dmos that were delayed the 8kx itself when i pre-ordered it was delayed for like a year before i finally got it so i'm not saying like pimax is bad or anything like that i'm just giving a heads up that Pimax usually takes longer to deliver things, but when they do, they actually do deliver what they promise. So this is pretty cool. And if you're going to do the Kickstarter backing, I would recommend to see it as more of an investment rather than a, a direct, like right away delivery. So you're kind of investing in them building this technology moving forward. Now Pimax has an offer where if you purchase an 8KX or other headset, you can take off the full purchase price of that headset when toward your purchase of the Pimax Reality headset. So um, some pretty interesting offers and um, I'm very much looking forward to eventually seeing a prototype or somebody testing this headset out because you can have a lot of great ideas, but it takes actual execution to see whether all of this can come together well. And also how well does it work? And with such an advanced headset, does, is it going to break down 
how well is the uh, technology in terms of wear and tear. So that's it for my video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already for many more VR videos and I will see you guys next time.